Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Those in the gallery, welcome. Those that are watching, welcome. Madam City Clerk, would you uh, enlighten us with the quote of the week? Your actions in life set your course and determine the destination of your travels. Your reactions in life create the climate in which you travel. Thank you. I call the 10th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Uh, excuse. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clionis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Racky? Excuse. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Verhasselt? Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. And now it's time to pledge allegiance to our beautiful country, Alderman Clayunas. Would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Clayunas. Approval of the minutes, President Berg. Uh, yes, sir. thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as entered on the record. Thank you. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Attorney McLean, Mayor's appointments. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the first one is uh, dated today's date. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Ernest M. Kepler to be considered for appointment to the Employee Remuneration Remuneration Committee, excuse me, term to expire 43007, signed by the mayor. And I'd ask for a motion to suspend to approve the, uh, the appointment. Move to suspend. Second. Second. Any objection to that? Might move, uh, move to confirm the appointment. Second. There's a motion to second to confirm. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is approved. Thank you. And to the <clears throat> Naming Rights Committee, uh, there's the list that was submitted at the last council meeting, and I understand that that's... That yes, wrong, this is the uh, old list for the Naming Rights Committee. I'd ask for a motion to file. Yes, thank you. I move to file that list. Second. There's a motion and a second to file. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, then the new list dated today's date, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Naming Rights Committee. Alderperson Mark Hanna, Alderperson Daniel Verhassel, Tom Holton, Chairman, Paulette Enders, Vice Chairman, Richard Meyer, Richard Grenke, and Claudia Krepsky, uh, all terms expiring 41607, signed by the Mayor. I'd ask for a motion to suspend and approve those appointments. Motion to suspend. Second. Any objection? Please continue. Yes, move to confirm the appointments as read. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments approved. Thomas Paneski and Pamela Gottsecker to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee to fill the two new member positions created by resolution number 440607. Terms to expire 43007. Signed by the Mayor. Ask for a motion to confirm. Confirm. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Confirmed. And finally, Barbara A. Smith to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of Cleo Messner, whose term expires on 430.08. Signed by the Mayor. Ask to confirm. Move to confirm. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Madam City Clerk, public forum. First on the list would be Dimple Adams. Dimple, if you could please come to the front podium. And can you give me your home address, please? 14, 1424 Virginia Avenue. Is this good? 
That's good. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Susan. Um, thank you, Council, for letting me come tonight to speak. I haven't been here in a while. Um, <laughs> that's probably good news for some. But anyway, I'm here tonight to discuss our favorite topic that we've been talking about for two, three, five, maybe 20 years, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I just had to chuckle with the headline in the paper yesterday that said, Magic Monday. There's nothing magical about this Monday. We've done this many times. We voted on a site for the police station. And tonight we're going to do it again. And we all know pretty much probably how that vote is going to turn out because there's been nothing magical about it. It's been in the works for a long time. It's basically been almost decided for a long time. And it has been manipulated by a lot of people for a long time. And it's not going to be a good deal for the city because of the things that I said to you in my letter um, and also in the editorial yesterday. In fact, I, I guess I'm just wondering why in May of 2003, the parking lot was assessed at a value of 127,000. Then in February of 2004, the parking lot was assessed at a value of 326,000. And now today in 2006, it's assessed, assessed at a value of 122,000.4. These aren't my figures. These are figures that are in the paper. And these are figures uh, from Adam Payne that are in this document that I have in front of me. So, you know, one can't help but wonder, what is really the real value of that parking lot down on 7th and Penn? You guys have to decide that tonight. And that's all I'm going to say about that. We had a site voted on two years ago. I know you're tired of hearing about it. It was a free site. And for the first time, thank you, Alderman Verhassel, in your letter yesterday, you finally admitted that the Friends of the Park and all of you people that worked so hard to save Sheridan Park, that only half of it was going to be used. We had been saying that all along, but it was never in writing by any of you people that wanted the park saved until yesterday in, in the Sheboygan Press. So I appreciate that, that finally some honesty came out with that. And tonight, um, the battle isn't going to hear, end here tonight. Once you've voted on this site, then the next battle is going to be, what are we going to build? And I think Alderman Susha has already laid it out on the table that if it's not going to be, or if it's going to be more than $7 million, according to her quote, then we're not going to build it. Well, I don't know what kind of police station you're wanting, but I want one that was studied to be what Sheboygan needed, not what Oak Creek needed, not what Janesville needed, not what you know the county needs. It's what we need. It's what Chief Kirk has said that we need. Chief Kirk has said we can live with 23rd Street. I'm willing to do that. But I am not willing to have a police station built that will not have a detective division, a dispatch, a garage, and all the things that we need. We're not talking about uh, things that are extravagant. We're talking about necessities for 2006 to keep our city safe. I thank you for your time, and I want you guys to really work hard to make what's right for Sheboygan to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Dimple. Next on the list would be Carter Paulus. <coughs> And Carter, could you give me your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. 
And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you, Your Honor. This is a copy of a letter that I wrote as an open letter to the mayor of Sheboygan. And it states as follows. Your police department personnel and leadership is out of control and should be dismissed forthwith. In the last three years, I have witnessed unbecoming conduct, starting with the police commissioner and progress through the ranks to the culmination of releasing of documents stamped, do not disclose to the public to further incite, confuse, intimidate, spy, and attempt to destroy the natural equilibrium and stability of the city of Sheboygan and can no longer be condoned or tolerated by the citizens of Sheboygan, the majority of the citizens of Sheboygan. The politics of division are totally unacceptable. I have witnessed the police commissioner give Alderman Montemayor the finger in public and state to her later that he was proud, unquote, of his action. Is that the kind of leadership Sheboygan citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed the police department pack common council meetings repeatedly in uniform to intimidate the council toward its way of thinking, not even leaving room for citizens to participate in their government. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed the police department pack common council committee meetings repeatedly in uniform to intimidate those committee members towards their way of thinking leaving insufficient room for citizens to participate in their government. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed police department personnel participate in public demonstrations on South Business Drive and Union Avenue to intimidate the public towards their way of thinking. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed police department personnel to participate in public demonstrations on Calumet and North Avenues to intimidate the public towards their way of thinking. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed police department personnel participate in public demonstrations on Erie Avenue and 14th Street to intimidate the public toward their way of thinking. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. I have witnessed police department personnel participate in public demonstrations on the steps of our city hall to intimidate the public and our government leaders towards their way of thinking. Is that the kind of conduct our citizens want? An emphatic no. There are other items that others have had to endure by this police department's unacceptable conduct. But the premature release of a he said, she said report that is not complete and stamped do not disclose and further divides the community is totally unacceptable. Is that the kind of conduct we want from our police department? An emphatic no. These actions have fostered and emboldened that minority element of our citizenry to further excesses against our city government and its citizens. Is that the kind of conduct the majority of our citizens want? An emphatic no. All these inappropriate actions by the Sheboygan Police Department to intimidate and circumvent the normal governmental actions of our city is totally unacceptable to the citizens of Sheboygan, the majority of the citizens in Sheboygan. We pride ourselves in our democracy we must dispense with this ruthless politics and focus on fostering respect, civility, and unity in our democratic process on all levels of government or see our democracy slip away into anarchy. If need be, the governor should be asked for all legal help 
and personnel to restore order to our city of Sheboygan and the police department personnel involved in this egregious conduct against our city and the majority of its citizens should be dismissed forthwith. Carter, your time is up. I have just one last sentence, if I may. Yes, I may. The majority of the citizens ask you, Mayor Perez, and all 16 of you aldermen, present or not present, to perform for the benefit of our citizens now. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the list is John Winter. John, could you give me your home address, please? Certainly, 2213 Broadway Avenue. Broadway. And you will have five minutes, sir. I might just go a few seconds over that. I'll let you know. Won't be any more than that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm here tonight to talk about the police station on 23rd Street site. As you know from the past, the police association has always preferred either the Sheridan site or the Vandervaart site. But since those two options are no longer available, that leaves the 23rd Street site, and it's time to move on. On August 9th, the Capital Improvements Committee recommended that the new police station be over 60,000 square feet at a cost of $13.5 million. I'd like to thank Mayor Perez, also Alderperson Graf, Alderperson Vanderweel, as well as Mr. Henry Young, who voted in favor of this motion and their foresight in recognizing the space needs of the police department. Now I ask the council to follow up on that vote and to fill that space with the tools needed to provide quality police service to the citizens of Sheboygan. Recently, some unacceptable recommendations have been made about the police department. Suggestions such as not needing a detective division, not, ha not needing holding cells, not having a garage, eliminating dispatchers, or having too many restrooms. Four of these items I mentioned are vital to police operations. The last item is vital to our personal needs. With the detective division, the importance of this unit can't be stressed enough. These detectives devote all their time in investigating uh, complicated crimes. Crime scene investigation has become a science in itself. Not having a detective division would be like having a hospital without an intensive care unit. Just not a good idea. Holding, recent, another item was uh, regarding holding cells. I'm not sure why anyone would recommend that the police station not have holding cells. I don't think they want arrested individuals, some violent, to be allowed to wander the building. As it stands now, we don't have enough. In the, in the patrol division, we only have two holding cells, but yet somehow we're supposed to divide four categories of suspects, that's male and female adults and male and female juveniles, into two cells. The math doesn't work out. This also opens up the city to liability. Holding cells are needed for the safety of everyone working or visiting the police department, plus the safety of the suspects in custody. Next is the need for a garage and an on-site mechanic. It is important to have a police garage to protect the expensive equipment inside those vehicles, and also had to have all the police vehicles located in one place rather than spread out at various locations as it is now. It is also important to have an on-site mechanic. Having him on-site is the most efficient use of his time, as opposed to having him, having him use his time to shuttle vehicles back and forth from the police station to another site. Currently, we are keeping cars three years instead of two, and as a result, we're seeing more breakdowns. If the mechanic is spending part of his day shuttling cars, that means there's less time for making repairs and fewer cars available for street duty. The result may, be, may mean requiring a larger fleet of squad cars so there are enough to cover the city. Hopefully you can see the snowball effect this has in moving the mechanic off-site. Recently, several, several older persons have taken tours of various dispatch centers. In Rock County, it was, shown the, it was shown that a dispatch center must be sufficiently staffed and equipped. The officer conducting the tour made the comment that if you are considering a joint dispatch center to save money, then that is the wrong reason. But there is an opportunity in front of you right now that would save money on a joint dispatch center. Build it in a new police station. Again, doing some research, I found that to expand the current Sheriff Department dispatch center would, would to accommodate extra dispatchers and the equipment would cost about $450,000. But making a joint dispatch center in a new police station would cost about $300,000, a savings of 150000 
Dispatchers are a lifeline for both citizens and the officers when they are in, in trouble and need of help. That requires dispatchers that know the city and the resources available. Our call volume is greater than that of the Sheriff Department, therefore our needs are greater. So placing the dispatch center in the police department makes sense for a number of reasons. Finally, there is one other area that I think some people may see as a perk, but I see as a necessity, and that is providing an exercise room. Health is an important issue, especially when you consider that physical confrontations are part of our jobs. Having an area to maintain our physical ability not only helps officers in their jobs, but also keeps costs lower for the city. That means less workers' compensation claims and lower health care costs. Recently, a meeting was held to look into reducing health care costs for city employees invest investing in their health insurance. Providing an exercise room would help towards that investment. Keep in mind that we are only asking for a room because the equipment we have now, which was obtained through private donations and through purchases through the police associations, would be used inside that room. So there is no cost to the city other than providing that room. Excuse me, John, would you like an extra minute? 15 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So I go back to the building of the new police department. We are pleased to hear that it has been recommended to build a 60,000 plus square foot facility. But let's not let it be an empty shell. Please equip it with the tools and resources we need to provide police service to the community that the citizens expect and deserve. Thank you. Thank you, John. And last on the list is Terry Thomas. Terry, can you give me your home address, please? 2321A Cleveland Avenue. Cleveland. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I want to thank you all for having me here tonight. This is the first time I've been here. I have three young children, so time is very valuable to me. Um, I have a few issues I would just like to bring to everyone's attention, and perhaps in future when we're not planning a police department to go up that some of these issues can be addressed. Um, first of all is city regulations for renting. The electric code is only a 60 amp. Now if you want to get purchase renters insurance to protect your belongings, you need 100 amp service. So I'd like to know how, if you are in a home that you are renting that has 60 amp, how do you go about getting renters insurance? I am in that situation, and I recently had a laptop computer stolen from me, which is well over $2,000 alone. Besides for that, my identity could be stolen as a result of that because of all the information on this laptop. It's been reported to the police, and I'm still waiting upon a response. The other thing I would like to discuss with you is there's been so much talk and money spent on drugs and keeping our city safe from drugs and keeping the drugs off the streets, which I am all for that. I commend the officers and police departments and everyone working on this situation that is very, very important to this city, the schools, and all the children and the future of the city. But have they ever, besides for them keeping, working on keeping the drugs off the streets, have they ever thought about the adverse effect of the economics, supply and demand. If we can get rid of the demand, the supply will automatically go down. There is a few places for addicts in Sheboygan to go to get help, but there is not nearly enough. Unfortunately, I had to live through a situation where my fiance at the time was an addict and I met him when he was clean. Didn't know about the addiction until we were in love and had children. He's been through Genesis and many other places in Sheboygan for help. There is no long-term place in Sheboygan to get help. I never knew how big of a problem this was until it personally affected my life. It is hard to see somebody who wants help and is fighting every day to keep clean, to have this addiction, which is a disease, 
no different than a gambling disease or an alcoholic or anything else. It's just the same. It's all an addiction. So I suggest that the city of Sheboygan work on spending some money to help people get clean and stay clean. And if people are not demanding the drugs, the supply and the drug dealers will not be coming here to bring the drugs because they're not selling them. So I just think that that is a different way to look at this situation and to keep the drugs off the street and to keep our community clean and safe. And I thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Terry. That's it. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the citizens who addressed the council tonight. Please always feel free to do so. At this time, we have a proclamation to present Toys for Tots. I'd ask for Mr. Junior Clark, Mr. Bob Colbert, Mr. Mike Daniels, please step up. As you know, Toys for Tots uh, started today already. Uh, so we were hoping to uh, make this proclamation a little bit timelier, but this is the best we could do, and we did have a meeting today. I'd like to thank all three of you gentlemen for all the work that you do, the volunteer work, and for caring for the kids and our city uh, in general. Uh, not everybody has the big heart that you have, and the ones that don't can truly appreciate that, so thank you very much. Proclamation, whereas the United States Marine Corps sponsors a local Toy for Tots campaign, and whereas a Toy for Tots campaign worked with the Salvation Army to provide toys and gifts for needy families and children in the city of Sheboygan, and whereas without the Marine Corps and other community groups such as the Sheboygan Softball Association coordinating efforts, many families in the city of Sheboygan would not find themselves at Christmas without gifts for their children. And whereas the 17th Annual U.S. Marine Corps of the Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Softball Association Tournament to raise money for the annual campaign begins at Wildwood Complex today, August 24th, and runs through Sunday, August 27th. Now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of August 21st to 206 through August 27th as support of local Toys for Tots Week. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to just present to the city, uh, this is this year's edition of our Toys for Tots shirt. It's the 17th anniversary. Um, the neat thing about this proclamation this year, um, at this point, we're up to $191,000. And uh, the way the weather forecast looks like we're going to hit $200,000 this year. And this is the, um, you see a lot of tournaments, softball tournaments, where these guys play for big money and everything like this. That's the first place award. There's a sponsor plaque that goes with the logo, but this is it. And when you go on Sunday, if you stop down there, you're going to see men and women, and we have a youth division, fighting for that Toys for Tots teddy bear. And that is in the logo, and I think the, the true meaning of that teddy bear is the loving, the caring, the sharing of the Sheboygan people that make this Toys for Tots tournament one of the largest Toys for Tots collection for the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, at that, I'd like to thank all the people in the city of Sheboygan and the area, uh, the city of Sheboygan, and everyone else for helping us uh, bring a class act as we do at Wildwood Complex. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your hard work. The little bear's got a bat. The next item on the agenda is the mayor's comments. There's three things that I wanted to address tonight, and somewhat briefly, but if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to call my office. The first item has been touched on briefly tonight, and that is 
once we pass the threshold of selecting a site, after tonight we have a site. It's either going to be at 23rd or it's going to be right next to City Hall. But I strongly urge the council, we can't go forward anymore. We need to build a police station. Having said that, we also need to be very mindful that although we're going through some harsh, harsh financial times, scrounging up money, that we have to be mindful of addressing not only immediate needs, but future needs. At the most tempting moment sometimes <clears throat> requires the most courage. We can save lots of money if we build a cheaper station. You save it today, you pay for it tomorrow or some other day. So I would ask the council to be mindful of that. And although each one of you represents a district, an award in each district, your vote impacts the entire community, not just your district. And that's pretty powerful. You have a lot of power with you when you act as collectively as a council. Please keep that in mind. The other comment that I wanted to, to make uh, concerns the mayor wanted to abolish the police department. Folks, if I wanted to abolish the police department, you would have seen it already. I wouldn't be fighting for a police station as I am now. It's the farthest thing from truth. I don't know why people say that. I have an idea why people say that, but it's the farthest thing from the truth. Chief Kirk and his two deputies speak constantly. Most of you and all of the public are not privy to those discussions. And I don't make it a habit to go telling everyone every single time I talk to department heads about every single item that we talk about, because that's just not the right way to do it. If any alderman ever wishes to know, I'd be glad to sit down with you and talk to you. But the dynamic of municipal government and decision making is complex. Some people say, why don't you just do it? It doesn't happen that way. I wish it did, make my job easier, quite frankly. It doesn't happen that way. It's complex and it's very, very challenging. And there's a lot of dynamic that has to come together to make things happen. Sometimes we have to wait a little bit, and that's okay. So long as you keep focused and, take, and don't take your eyes off the goal. I want to build a strong police force in our city, which leads me to my next point. We were told today about the drug problem, and we were told that people don't understand how big it is, and that's true. We obviously don't associate in that line of friendship. For us, there is no problem, but it's out there, and we can no longer ignore it. I will no longer ignore it. And it's a timely issue that has been addressed by our citizen today because just this morning, Chief Kirk and I were talking about it, how we're going to put together an aggressive program to deal with this issue. Now, I don't know that we can eliminate this. This is a bigger problem than Sheboygan is in the whole country, in the whole world. It's a big, big problem because there's lots of big money involved. But we need to send the message to those drug dealers that if they're going to deal drugs, they're not going to do it in Sheboygan. And if they are, it's going to cost a lot of money, and there are going to be severe penalties for that. And there has to be a program out there that's perhaps a role program, a model program. But we have to create our own. But the citizen that spoke tonight was absolutely right. You cut off that demand, they're going to go to where the demand is. And it may be that addressing the big guys is part of the solution, but addressing the ones that are asking for it is the other part of the solution. It's a two-pronged area that you have to address. You will be seeing and you will be hearing from me plans as they materialize on that particular topic. And I would ask you as aldermen to talk to people on the community. Find out how big is this thing? It can literally destroy a community and it can literally destroy a family and the people who use it. It's that bad, it's that ugly. So please be mindful of that. We will move on. 
Alderman Hanna. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I would like to pull forward resolution 1045. Okay. Please continue. I would like to move for suspension of the rules and put the resolution upon as passage. Okay, is there a second to second? Is there any objection to suspension? There being none, the motion is to put the resolution upon as passage. And there, is there a second to that motion? Second. Second, under discussion. Is there any discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think this may be just housekeeping, and I support the resolution, by the way, uh, but this is for the city attorney. On the third page of the resolution, uh, down at the bottom, where it talks about the uh, county holding the funds for, for, for 12 months, et cetera. And then the fourth page, the revised fiscal note, down where it says re reserve fund, uh, Mr. Finch, in his document, that revised document, didn't make any uh, reference to the 12 month period when he was talking about the reserve fund down on the bottom. I guess my question is, does page three take precedent and cover page four or should it been, should have uh, Mr. Finch mentioned that 12 month period in his document? Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Mr. McLean, is there a comment there? Uh, yes, Alderman Bourne, it'd be <clears throat> my opinion that the text of the resolution would supersede the, uh, the finance director's fiscal notes. That's just, you know, putting, listing the figures, but the, uh, the text of the resolution would supersede it. Any other discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you know, I was very disappointed with the, um, uh, the committee that decided to change the amount we're spending on the police station from seven million up to 13 and a half million. Now, I know tonight we're not talking about the price, we're talking about the location, and I've said this more than once, that we've spent way too much time talking about the location and not concentrating what we're going to build and how much we're going to spend. And currently at $13.5 million, no matter how much I believe we need a new police station, because I truly do believe we need a new one, but the citizens cannot afford $13.5 million. And if that continues as it stands today, I will not vote in favor of building a new police station. So for that reason, I'm going to abstain on the location because I think it would be hypocritical for me to pick a location when ultimately if the price stays at $13.5 million, I'm going to say no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple comments. First, Sheboygan's a wonderful city, and I'm very proud of all my home. Tonight, we have an opportunity to move forward together. To my friends on the county board, I truly believe you have a moral commitment to deliver a clean site to us. Do not forget for one minute that we are in, all in this partnership together. To the police department, and particularly thank you to Officer Winter for tonight for speaking to us. We will build a police station that meets the needs of our community and support our outstanding officers. I have personally, personally witnessed your space needs and also know how important the physical condition of our officers is for our community safety. Thank you, Alderman Hamm. President Byrd. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think in a couple of brief comments, this isn't the perfect site, it isn't the perfect deal, but uh, of the sites we have and of the choices we have, I think clearly it's the uh, direction that we need to go. As a point of awareness, much has been made of the potential contaminant in the area. Uh, I've enjoyed the opportunity of following with the supervisors who represent the first district and uh, learned that we have access to go on that site and put a shovel in the ground anytime we want to. Uh, we don't need permission. There was a pre-existing uh, county board resolution which granted us access. So in terms of if in the judgment of our engineering staff that it is important for us to conclude a phase three or any other environmental studies prior to uh, if you would consummating the deal, I think we have that option. So, I, and I would assume that the building use committee would take that under some advisement or consideration in as much as they have the resources and the funding to do that environmental work. Thank you. Thank you, President Burke. Chief Clark, would you uh, like to address the council? Please step up, sir.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Common Council. Uh, first off, I, I thank you for the uh, comments as to the uh, drug situation in our community, in the state, and in the nation. And certainly we have discussed this. As I was named chief over six years ago, we addressed this. It became our number one concern that we needed to deal with. We've dealt with it aggressively, proactively. We received state awards, received international recognition. Yet there's more work that can be done and will be done. Thank you. <clears throat> Once again, we sit here with a site selection, and I say to myself, could it be, I hope we get this site selected tonight and we move forward. I compare it to a, a long a bus ride or a long trip that you take with your family before we have MapQuest, where you don't know necessarily how many more miles you have to go or what highways you have to, have to proceed down. You know that someplace around the next bend you're going to get there. When I was a child, frequently I'd ask my parents, are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's the same thing here again today. 1977, when I first began employment with this city, I jumped on this bus that was taking us to a new police station. My chief at that time, Chief Frank, told me, and I've mentioned this before to this common council, he tells me that day, and I remember it like it happened yesterday, he says, Kid, don't worry about the facility. We're going to build the police department soon. I hope we're there. I hope that we pick this site tonight. I do endorse and support the 23rd Street site tonight. I've been actively involved in the pursuit of this police station, this police site for the last six years as chief. There was great effort. We named uh, Deputy Chief Weiss as our project manager. We had 15 to 17 different members who sat on different internal planning teams to sit down with different architectural firms at different times to do needs assessments. We worked on adjacencies, we worked on our needs and what was needed for a large police department. We are deemed in the nation a medium-sized police department, but actually in the state of Wisconsin, we're a rather large police department. We have a large community of 51,000, 50,000 something in between 50 to 51,000. As I talk around the state, there, there's a, hundreds of police departments in the state of Wisconsin and they look up to us as a rather large police department. So when I refer to us being a medium size, that's really not the case in, in the state of Wisconsin. We're large and because of the service and the level of services we provide, we need certain uh, facilities and equipment, etc. As we proceeded down this trip many years ago, since 1977 for me and certainly earlier for others, we received bumps in the road, or bumps in the road, detours along the way, but we're getting there. Once again, I think you must, I was at a Chiefs conference this last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this last week, and I've talked to officers up in Green Bay. I have not heard this prior to this last week. The officers there were, were speaking to us, and, and I sat down, I talked to a number of them. They said, Chief, you have an excellent police department. You have some excellent officers. You have work that goes on up there, which is outstanding. However, I will tell you right here tonight, we would never apply at your police department because of the facility. We don't know when you're going to build a facility. I now tell the new people coming on, I say the same thing my chief told me, and I believed him then, and I hope my officers believe me here tonight, we will build a new police station. It is coming. Just give us some time. One other point I need to bring up is an employee just recently uh, brought to my attention they have escape plans in our secretarial area that if someone would break free, someone that we have in custody would break free, our employees have actually talked about how and where they would leave to get away from the person who broke free from our custody and into their work area. There are some great liability concerns with the current facility, and I know that you're aware of this. I know that the issue of the necessity of a new police department is no longer to be discussed because it's accepted. I wish to say thank you tonight to the Capital Improvements Commission for their support in the budget and the square footage of a police facility that we need. This is a, this is a big project. This is a big budgeted item. We understand that. But the fact is the police or the city has never built a police station. We have been housed in City Hall since we first began and, and since we, City Hall, uh, was constructed. 
project is expensive yes it is but it will get costlier as time goes on i see the budget continuing to rise last year we built a fire station on the south side because it was accepted that the, the prices are continuing to rise and we should make it a priority and build it we did build it and we need to build the police department this is a costly project. We, we accept that. We have taken a look at square footage. Under my administration in the last six years, we've done three needs assessments. Steuben, Rock, and Kimmy, the first one, said we, after we sat down with 15 to 17 of our employees, spent a great number of hours, they said you need 64,000 square foot for this facility to meet what you need to provide the level of service that you are currently providing and for future growth. It is predicted that Sheboygan in 20 years will grow from 51,000 to 54,700, I believe. That's Steuben Rack Kimmy estimates. So we're not talking about large future growth. We're looking at a growth of 3,000 some uh, citizens for the city of Sheboygan. So futuristic growth is not huge as far as a police department goes. As we went then, Steuben, Rock, and Kimmy told us we need 64. Then we had the Engberg Moyer report that said we needed 80,000 square feet. Then we had Zimmerman came in and said we needed 80,000. As you look at our project, site is important. It's a very important, crucial selection period. We spent enough time on site selection. 23rd Street is a good site. It is a good site. It has adequate space for what we are now currently looking at. For those who are at home and for those here tonight, I need to stress that as we moved on from one architect to another, the concept of our building has changed. I think you can recall where we needed, or Steuben Rock Kimmy indicated to us, and we, we stood with them, that we needed four acres on 23rd Street. But if you can recall, that was for a one-story facility that would then take and needed four acres. Now we're looking at the current concept, and I support this. I want this to be very clear tonight. I do support this. I do endorse the plan that's on the table at this time, approximately 63,000 or 60,000 plus square footage at what some say is 13.5. Size is very important because it looks at the needs of our department and we must build a facility that will t address the needs and provide the equipment and the, the equipment, the, the rooms, the interview rooms, etc., for the level of services we provide uh, to our citizens. The project is long overdue. I think our employees need to be commended for understanding. At times, we become vocal. However, I commend my employees for understanding that our project will be addressed. We will have a new police department. I want to thank you tonight. I want to thank you for the effort that you're going to put forth once again. I want to say thank you prior to your vote here tonight that you will provide this city with the police department, with the facility and the equipment that is necessary to continue with the level of service that this city deserves and demands. Thank you very much. As I said earlier, I wish to make it very clear, I do endorse this for the concept of the project. 2.7 acres on 23rd Street is adequate land to address the building size because it would be a multi-level facility, garage that would be somewhat subterrain, and then a floor above. This will address the necessity of a new police department and the needs of the size that we need. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Under further discussion, we have Alderman Ryan first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we as members of the Common Council, and I do uh, use the word we because we're all in this together, um, have basically muddled through this issue for far too long. Uh, we've, we've made some probably unprofessional appearing decisions, um, and now we're, we're down to a 2.72 acre site to build a police station on that uh, operationally, economically, geographically, I think there were better sites out there. 
So we're down to North 23rd Street and City Hall. Um, I came in to this, well, earlier today, uh, I had, I, I wanted to put in a, uh, uh, an amendment to this resolution addressing the environmental concerns of this property. Um, in the private sector, nobody ever buys property uh, that has some environmental questions um, without that being addressed. There's not a bank in the country that will finance a property without the seller taking responsibility for any environmental issues that may arise. But on this property, uh, if, this is, if this passes tonight, we're going to ask the taxpayers to probably take that chance. Um, I have serious reservations about that. However, at this point, to put in an amendment to get the county to agree to take responsibility for it or to take the $175,000 that is set aside for future shared services that if we do run into that big can of worms uh, that it may be applied to it, um, that would only delay this process. We've, we've been through this long enough. Um, we, we, have to, we have to get moving on our police department. Our, 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 police, uh, our police department, they deserve it. Uh, I think the citizens are tired of this. Uh, this is not the ideal location, but uh, it needs to be done. I'd like to uh, uh, applaud the mayor, uh, Alderman Graf, uh, Alderman Vanderweel, for appropriating $13.5 million to build this facility. I have some, uh, we have 2.72 acres now if this passes. The only choice we have is to build a multi story structure. It's the only way it's going to fit on the, on the site. Um, Eight million dollars will not build a multi-story structure, and to pass, some, to pass a resolution that is not sufficient to build a police department, um, and then give part of the responsibilities to the county under the guise of shared services, which there's nothing wrong with shared services, but it's supposed to be sharing responsibilities. The county does this; we do that, uh, just to give to give services to wholesale to the county and to downsize our police department is not the answer. Um, I'm going to vote for the North 23rd Street site. I do urge others to do the same. Let's get this done with. Let's put it behind us. And when the question comes up for funding, uh, we have to build a facility that will be sufficient to meet the police department's needs. If we're not going to build a facility that is sufficient, we might as well not build one. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I've never been 100% sure which way I would vote tonight. I've voted many times on a police station site. I'm hoping tonight will be the last time. In the process of trying to make a decision, I've come up with more than seven reasons why not to go with either site. If I did not support the police department or building the first police station Sheboygan has ever built, I would vote down both sites. I realize that we will never find the perfect site that will make everyone happy. That site was lost in the 90s when we should have built the station. Of course, hindsight is 2020. Today I was studying the, the soil boring report. I found a few from a couple years ago and I, I recently got one today. And I'm convinced that we will not have a problem in the area that we, we are choosing to build on. Also, I appreciate Alderman Susha's comments that if we're not going to approve money to build a decent facility, then I would ask you to vote no on tonight because the police don't deserve something we have to replace in two years. So, you know, we have to spend the money, we have to equip it, and the, the police deserve a, a decent station. I've toured the station inside and out, and I've toured the, uh, the communication center, and, and they deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manorwheel. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like Mr. Holton to address uh, questions noted by Mr. Ryan and uh, also the answers that uh, Mr. Vanderweel posed. Uh, Mr. Holt would give us detail about the footprint, where that fits in the property, and previous soil borings. Mr. Holton, would you please step up here? Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm not quite sure on Alderman Ryan's questions uh, other than 
know that we had the soil borings and there's fill on the site and it sounds like if they're doing underground parking it's going to take care of the fill issue on the site. Uh, the contamination of uh, the fuel contaminated soils was near the salt shed and I think with a property line 30-35 feet to, to the west of there uh, would take care of that but I can't say that for certain. That's I like the idea of keeping the door open if you want to do a phase three it may make sense to do that. That we dug four test pits on the on the site, and uh, we found a little bit of wood, a little bit of brick, and some asphalt, and uh, nothing major. But we, it's obvious that it's fill that was brought in there. Okay, thank you. Do you, Alderman Ryan, you have a question for Mr. Holton? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was not, you know, actually posing a question, but making a statement. There always is the possibility. We have uh, 2.7 acres. We've had four soil borings on on the entire property. Uh, have we had any uh, uh, test wells for for water contamination on the on the property we're purchasing? No, not that I'm aware of. There were actually 10 soil borings and four test pits, but okay. nothing okay, that I know of any any testing for groundwater. And the soil borings, the 10 soil borings, showed no hydrocarbons? I, think, I believe there were three three borings to the east side near the salt shed that had a petroleum odor to it. I believe it was three. Uh, but all of them showed evidence of fill anywhere from two feet to maybe 10 feet of fill. I'm just you know, speaking hypothetically, not that we run into a, a big can of worms and we uh, get stuck with the, uh, with the bill for it. Thank you, Elmer Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Holton. Okay. Please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Abstain. Vanderweel? Aye. Anver Hasselt? Aye. 13 ayes and one abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Hanna? No. Pardon me? One no. One no. Alderman Hanna? Yes, oh, I'm sorry. And one no, I'm sorry. It would have been 12. I'm sorry, you're right. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I would like to pull forward uh, resolution 1046. Please do make motion. I would like to uh, make a motion to put the resolution upon as passage. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, President Berg? Uh, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I think there's a, uh, just a point of clarification, there is a difference between the two documents, so I would like to amend the resolution as you have it in your package. Uh, the amendment being uh, following the first sentence adding uh, authorizing building the police station at the city hall site and to eliminate the Vandevart site. That makes it uh, uh, compatible with the language that is in the agenda. Is there a second to that? Second. Please call the roll. This is on the amendment. On the amendment. Berg? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhassel, Aye. and Boren. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Hannah, would you like to make a motion to pass the resolution as amended? Mr. Mayor, I'd make the motion to pass the resolution as amended. Second. Second. Any discussion? Thank you, Alderman Hannah. Please call the roll. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Consent agenda, President Berg? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move to. Uh, Accept and file all RCs, uh, accept and adopt all the ROs, and pass all general ordinances. And that's 10 1 through 10 21. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Any discussion on that? There being none. Please call the roll. Graf? Aye. 
Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Rehasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1022 through 1023 to be referred. Please note that 1023 will also go to Parks and Forestry Commission in addition to Public Works. <clears throat> Report of Officers 2, 1024 will be referred to Building News Committee and City County Shared Services Committee. 1025 lies over. 1026 through 1044 to be referred. 1045 we've dealt with, 1046 we've dealt with. 1047 by Alderman, what is that? It's a cell phone. 10. 47 by Alderman Meyer authorizing the appropriate city officials. To Actually, I thought it was this thing doing making another noise. <laughs> but 10. Okay, we're ready to go again. 1047 by Alderman Meyer authorizing the appropriate city officials to sign the offer to purchase 0 .208 <clears throat> acres from Acuity as part of the Washington Street Reconstruction Project. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like a motion to suspend the real rules. Is there any objection? Please continue. Um, I would like um, Attorney McLean to please um, address this and explain to us why we need this, and then I would ask that this resolution be put upon its passage. Is there, there's a motion to put the resolution 1047 upon its passage and second. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is the last piece of the puzzle for the uh, Washington Street Taylor <coughs> Drive reconstruction project. Uh, the purchase of 0 0.208 acres from Acuity that would call for, that would provide for two additional turn lanes going south on Taylor Drive, turning uh, west onto uh, Washington Avenue. Uh, this was part of the relocation order that the council adopted a number of months ago, and uh, a number of the documents have previously come before the council for approval on the acquisition of the other pieces. Uh, point out that this is uh, the purchase price is more than the, the appraised value. Uh, they have requested, in addition, uh, two turn uh, turning uh, lanes or turn uh, median cuts, and the city staff is uh, in favor of that. That and there's a uh, an estimate from Butine Peterson in the neighborhood of sixty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-eight dollars. Uh, to do that. Uh, in addition, they're requesting that the acuity's appraisal costs in the amount of $3,150 be uh, reimbursed. Uh, along with this, city staff has talked to Walmart. They have, at least to this point, verbally agreed to pick up the tab for uh, both the acquisition and the cost not to exceed 67278 for the construction of the two turn lanes and median crossings and the and acuities appraisal costs. Uh, so if the turn lanes came in higher than the 67278 that would be on our nickel, but the city engineering department is pretty confident that that number uh, can be met, if not uh, be lower than that. So the recommendation uh, I would advise uh, approving this uh, resolution, purchasing that, uh, that property. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Again, it would be contingent on uh, getting a signed letter from Walmart agreeing to reimburse us. We haven't got that letter yet, but we wouldn't close with acuity until we did get that. Okay, thank you. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Davis, Aye. and Graf. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1048 by Alderman Graf and Meyer authorizing the city of Sheboygan to enter into a revised contract for obtaining prescription benefit management services. 
Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. I will abstain. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1049 lies over. 1050 through 1055 to be referred. Reported committee is 5, 1056 to be referred. Reported committee 6, 1057 through 1060 to be referred. Reported committee 7, 1061 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7168 based on her habitual law breaking and the significant number of violations related to the license activity. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, report be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Is uh, Tiffany Stauber present this evening? Not present, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman. Ryan. Any further discussion? Uh, no, Your Honor, I make a... Uh... That's it, that's all you need to do. Thank you. Any further discussion on that? Please call the roll. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1062 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 6484 based on, her, on his habitual criminality and based on violations related to the license activity. Alderman Ryan. I move that the report be accepted and adopted, Your Honor. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Is Miguel Morales present this evening? He is not, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any discussion on that? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Cleonis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1063 by short, short, short term Committee on Employee Remuneration requesting the city to authorize MRA, a management association, to get information which the committee needs to compare 15 positions in the city with comparable positions in private industries of the same size, same employee size in the, in the Sheboygan County area, and to authorize up to $3,000 to be spent to accomplish this task. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Honor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and second. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt report of the committee. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Any discussion? Alderman Manning. By way of commentary, uh, the rationale is we need this, this money to uh, get the information that we need to finish our work. The um, MRA is a professional association of management. They would uh, do the research necessary uh, to get information to us that's not available in the public venue. Uh, the cost of small change versus other costs that we're facing in the city. By way of example, insurance costs have gone up 199% in the last 10 years. If in fact they had gone up at 4% a year instead of the rates that they had increased, we would have today $2.2 million a year every year available to build a police station of whatever size we chose. So I think these dollars in relationship to the bigger issues involved both for the city as well as the state and the nation uh, is essential that we spend this to have something to help us understand where we are and to use that information to move ahead for the good of the city and the good of the greater community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manning. Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think this is a good concept. I just have some questions in regards to why only 15 positions when we have a couple hundred positions, and also of the 15 positions that are being looked at, um, do they include all of the department heads? Okay, Alderman Matty, would you like to address that, sir, or not? Your Honor, I would like to uh, call that sir forward. Is that not here? Okay, then I will speak to that. Uh, he can speak better, but I will speak to him. What they did was work with private industry Joe Hilke from Beeman's company, and worked with those people on our committee who are in business uh, to decide the best way to approach this. And the best way to approach this is to look at job categories that are parallel both in industry and in the public sector. And to do that in such a way that you're comparing comparable size companies to the size employer that we are, so that you're having as fair an evaluation as possible. And in working together with private industry, they came up with 15 positions that they felt would be fairly easy to compare uh, and quite comparable. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I realize that the money will be well spent and, and we need the information, but I also need to ask, where is the $3,000 coming from? And also, have we looked into the possibility of the committee doing this or themselves instead of hiring out? The uh, $3,000 will come from contingency. Alderman Manny? And the second question, uh, we cannot do the work ourselves. Information in the private sector is beyond easy availability. We could pursue and find some, but in all probability it would be inadequate. By going professionally, they protect the companies that give them information. So we will never know the company's names, but we will have adequate information in our hands about the dollars involved. Thank you, Alderman Manning. Okay, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1064 to be referred. Ordinances introduced 10, 1065 to 1066 lies over. 1067 through 1071 to be referred. However, Please note 1067, 68, and 69, and 70 will also be referred to public protection and safety. Matters laid over 11, 968 by Alderman Groff, resolution number 920607 by Alderman Groff, Hannah, Clayunas, Susha, and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 206 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. That resolution, along with resolution 930607, which is Council Document 969, which is a, um, a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations also in the 2006 budget, I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> 1072 is a communication received by the mayor from Mrs. Barbara Semple regarding safety issues near the YMCA concerning children being present with moving cars in and around the YMCA. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1073 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting an evaluation of request for proposal 1828 received on August 3rd for the purchase of a wastewater treatment plant cone-shaped vortex grit washer. <laughs> Well, pretty. <laughs> Could you say it again? <laughs> no. That will be referred to Public Works. 
At least it's not going to the remuneration committee. <laughs> 1074 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter a contract for the purchase of a wastewater treatment plant drip washer. That will be going to public works. 1075 is a communication from Kevin O'Driscoll, Vice President of McGrath Associates, representative of the owners of the properties at 628, 630, 629, 633 North A Street, requesting an encroachment of city property in order for the owner of Chocolate Fantasies to place outdoor tables and chairs within the city's right of way between Memorial Day and Labor Day. And that will be referred to City Planning Commission. 1076 is a similar RO submitting communication from Kevin O'Driscoll, Vice President of McGrath Associates, uh, requesting an encroachment of city property in order for the owner of Ecology Outfitters to display a kayak trailer on the city property between Memorial Day and Labor Day. That will be referred to city plan. 1077 is an ordinance granting Robert G. Wood, Todd McGrath, and Lance T. McGrath their heirs and assigns privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 8th Street, located at 631 North 8th Street in the city for the purpose of maintaining a patio area. That too will go to city planning. 1078, an ordinance granting Robert G. Wood, Todd McGrath, and Lance McGrath their heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of New York Avenue, located at 633 North 8th Street, in the city for the purpose of displaying merchandise. Also city plan. 1079, submitting communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration stating that they do not, they do not object to the final plat bearing the August 11, 2006 revision date for the preserve at Briarwood. And that too will go to City Planning Commission. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night.